What's going on guys, Jason here, betterbody90.com, and today I wanna to talk briefly about creating a calorie deficit, kind of what it is and how to go about it. So first we'll talk about calculating kind of a, a base starting point for you, what your, your base calories are, more or less. And I wanna tell you right out of the gate, don't get too, you know, don't get too lost in the numbers and in the process. It's literally just like a, a starting point and it's just something you will select and start rolling with. But you'll just take some basic numbers of your life, of your body and where you're at now. And there's a bunch of different calculators out there. There's a bunch of different ways to go about it. I like to use recently just the free MyFitnessPal app, which is on Android and Apple. So there's there's options. There's also things online, different calculators. All that matters, all we're trying to do today is just calculate roughly what your daily calorie needs are to live and to breathe. Or as I heard a fitness person say on YouTube, to keep the lights on. Uh, and then from there, what we'll talk about is additional calories that you will need from fitness and how to create a deficit in a way that allows you to continue eating well, but also creating the deficit, or basically like eating just a little under, uh, taking in less energy than you are spending to live and to work out and to just, you know, to be. So that's what a deficit is, and that's what will facilitate your body to begin to start burning off body fat, to using the stored energy that you have, the fat that you've put on over the years. And it's gonna be a process, right? It doesn't take, uh, it doesn't take a week to put on weight to get seriously overweight. It takes a long time. It just seems like it, it happens faster, but we just it's because we're not paying attention. But when you take this stuff seriously, uh, it will take a little bit of time. I consider there's like a little ramp up period. There's a little uh, kind of like a proving grounds time frame that I, I've noticed where you kind of have to have some discipline and have a goal and you have to be consistent with it long enough so that your body can set itself up to then lose the body fat. For me, for example, like the first 90 days when I went at this, like I noticed with my meal prepping, I noticed some changes in the first 30 to 60 days. Like I was definitely seeing things change. I was feeling much better, but the major changes for me started happening from day 60 to 90 and then beyond when I remained consistent with the path that I was on, creating a deficit. And of course, things are different now, so that's not what this video is about now. I'm on a different path of kind of a, a maintenance to slight surplus level, but that's, I'll, I can talk about that later on. So as far as creating a deficit and just burning body fat, but also trying to maintain your lean mass, trying to maintain the muscle that you have, uh, that's, that's the importance of what I'm gonna talk about. Because it's not about just restricting calories. It's not about counting your calories and cutting everything out. Uh, if you have a particular way of eating and you enjoy that, then by all means, do it. And if you have results with a particular way of, you know, some sort of restrictive diet or whatever, that's, you know, do you. But if you're going to follow the content that I have, it's all about sustainability over time, which means you have to enjoy the process. You have to enjoy the food. You have to feel satiated. You have to enjoy the, the mouth pleasure, like the food has to actually taste good. Because if you're doing things that you don't enjoy, if you're creating a major deficit, if you're really cutting back, if you are restricting yourself, like in a way that's not sustainable, then it's just, that's exactly, it's not going to happen. It's not going to last long term because then you're eventually just going to start binging and, and everything's just going to fall apart. And uh, that's just not, that's not cool. That's not uh, sustainability over time and quality of life. So that's what this whole channel, that's what the content is about. So today, creating a deficit, basically eating just and under, like taking in less calorie units than your body is burning every day to live, to keep the lights on, and in addition with your fitness. And, uh, you know, it's not really new stuff, but I do want to shout out to, of course, the Athlean X channel because he described it really well. And uh, it's something that I have deployed into my own nutrition and it does work quite well. And that is a lot of people will go and I'll do like a little screen walk through. I'll show you some calculating some numbers, how to do it in the app. And I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about here as a visual aid. All right, so let's do this a little bit. So say you wanted to create a little deficit here, okay? Because you wanna start losing some body fat. So, and you've determined through calculations that you need about 2,000 per day to live and to be happy. Now, you want to eat a little bit less. That's how much energy your body needs, needs to maintain. That's what you've calculated. That's what, you've, what we've come to uh, as a number we're just gonna start with. 
So that's what we've determined in this example. It, it's gonna vary for you, but in this example, that's just, I like to start there. And that's what I did when I started my own journey. So you're not doing any other activity or anything like that. Let's just say you don't do much for fitness or really any at all and you're pretty sedentary. So, but 2000 is just what you need to live and breathe. And you wanna start losing some weight. So every day you decide you wanna create, you wanna eat a little less energy than what your body needs to live. So therefore it's gonna start pulling energy from what you stored. So let's say we wanna do anywhere from a three, you don't wanna to go too crazy. That's the thing, people get a little crazy with this stuff. Three to 500 calories or energy units, I like to call them. You wanna reduce anywhere in that range. So now you're gonna be taking in about 1,500 to about 1,700 calories per day, per day. And I don't know about you, and that might be good for some people, but that, that's not much food. That's quite a lot of restriction. That's not sustainable over time. Like if you need 2,000 to live and you're talking like weeks to months at 1,500 calories, like that's just, you're gonna burn out. That's just not, that's not enough food. Um, now, if you've determined that your calorie needs are only like, you know, 1,800 or something, and now you're cutting down to like, uh, what, 1,300 calories, that's just, no, but not, let me not stray from these numbers here. So well, what you want to do instead, okay, instead, still, um, still focused on creating the deficit, instead, uh, let's say you need 2,000, same numbers here, right? So we haven't changed anything here, 2,000 a day to live. But we have now, we've increased because we're doing extra, um, let's say we're doing HIIT cardio. And uh, so HIIT cardio. And we'll, let's just estimate that you're burning, I don't know, uh, 100 and, 150 to, to 200 additional calories here. Okay, so now we're anywhere from about 2,100 and, whoops, 2,100 and, okay, okay, don't mind that, 2,150 to 2,200, all right, so at this point, now, that's what you need per day to live plus the additional energy that you're burning, so now you can eat anywhere. Of course, I didn't give myself even numbers here, but uh, what is that? So um, let's subtract from there. Uh, it's 1750 to um, so 1750 minus 500 to about 1900. And uh, hopefully my numbers are right. <laughs> Basic arithmetic, whatever. I didn't say I'm that smart. I just said that uh, I. I have the general idea, I know what I'm talking about. So anyway, that's a little bit better, right? I mean, now you can eat at least a little more food. So you're, you're working out, you're starting to feel better there. You're also creating more of a, an afterburn. So your body's gonna be burning more energy. So you might find you can actually adjust that up even more, but we're gonna, you have to stay consistent with it just a little while to see how your body responds. Are you actually releasing body fat? Are you gaining weight? Are you staying the same over? I mean, this takes time, guys. It takes, you know, 30, 60. Like I said, for me, the biggest change is, was being consistent after 60 days. So 60 days to day 90, that last bit when I was doing my first initial 90-day starting period, that's where I noticed the, the majority. That's when my body started really like releasing the body fat, just burning through it because I created quite a deficit. But I was eating, uh, for me, well, it doesn't matter what I did, but... Uh, I averaged anywhere from about 2,000 to 2,200, and, but I was doing a lot of excess physical training. So I was increasing my calorie needs, therefore I could bring up my food intake, my energy intake, which I like to eat. I don't like to starve myself. I don't like to restrict myself in like, in like major ways. It's just not fun, it's not enjoyable, and it's not sustainable. So let's say, I mean, even another example here as you go, now let's say the same thing, you still wanna create a deficit, we're still doing the same thing. I don't know why I erased that whole thing. But still, let's just estimate the same 2,000 per day. Okay, 2,000 per day to be happy and to live. <laughs> and now, however, you've done, you're working out pretty heavily. You're, you're being active. You're going out for walks, maybe bike rides. You're working out three to five days a week. You've added some weight training. So let's just say 
uh, an estimate here, you're burning anywhere from um, 400 to 500 calories plus from, from your fitness and the afterburn that you get from it. So now you're at about anywhere from 2,400 to 2,500 calories per day to live and be happy, right? So now you want to create that same deficit. Uh, you want to subtract three to 500 calories below what you need to, to live and what you're burning. So at this point, now you, you're having anywhere from, uh, from 2,000 calories per day to 2,200. I mean, that's, that's a lot better, isn't it? Like that's, that's a much better amount of food than 1,500. If you're eating 1,500, it's really, really easy to hit that number. Like for an example, like now my, my average goal, what I'm aiming for every day with a small surplus, so, so eating a little more, uh, I'm aiming at around 3,000 calories. And that's not, like I'm eating a lot of food, but that's not hard to hit when you're talking additional snacks or just the little things add up over time throughout the day and things like uh, uh, adding oils or butters or fats, like those have a higher density of calories. So it's a little bit goes a long way. So that's why measuring and tracking comes in because if you're not measuring and tracking some of those little things like that, you could be way far off the data than, than what you think you are if you're not tracking it. So do you have to track? No. Uh, should you, if you wanna really laser target your goal and actually get there in a, in a, a decent amount of time, yeah, I really think you should. I think you should take some self-discipline, you should have some self-awareness, and you should go to work on yourself. Screw what anybody else thinks. They don't have to understand what you're doing because you're not doing some diet or some restrictive thing. You're not starving yourself. Now, you might not go out to eat or you might not have drinks every weekend. You might not do things like that. You might fit things in here and there, but you're going to do it in a way that is more sustainable and disciplined. So you're going to enjoy yourself but you're not gonna just go completely off track and just not pay attention. And if you do it this way, you don't need cheat days. It's just every day is just a normal day. You can still have, like I said, you can have pizza. I don't, I mean, beer doesn't really fit for me. It doesn't make me feel good. Like I obviously enjoy the feeling of alcohol, but I prefer if I'm gonna drink, if I'm gonna have anything, it's gonna be for me, my, my spirit alcohol is tequila. I can have that and I don't even, I don't get hung over, I get nothing. So, but I get a nice buzz off of it. I feel good, but it doesn't throw me off. But I count in every shot is about 70 calories. So I add it into my daily calorie goals. So I can make it fit. So I enjoy myself, but also I'm not derailing myself, right? Get it? So make things fit. If you're gonna go out and celebrate and you wanna, like if you're really taking this seriously, Go out and celebrate, but you don't have to eat the whole plate. You don't have to get the fried chicken. You don't have to do all that stuff. Can you? Yes. Should you? Uh, I mean, what are your goals? Where are you trying to go? If you don't really care, if you're just trying to like lose a little bit and just be a little healthier, go for it. But don't binge yourself. But if you're trying to like get shredded or you're trying to really burn the body fat fast as you can, optimally, I should say, like, but, and be healthy and be happy, then this is the way I think works because it's what I've done, it's what works. And it's, uh, it's validated a lot when I watch a lot of other uh, uh, fitness YouTubers or people with credentials and they're teaching the exact same stuff that I already did. So it's cool to see when I watch some of these videos, I stumble on them and I'm like, okay, well that's cool because what they're teaching, they, they know what they're talking about. They've got all the degrees, they've got the stuff and I didn't even see their content before it. But the way I went about it is exactly what I've done and I have the results now. It's not like in theory, it's what I've actually done and I got the results from it. So that's where I'm in turn trying to give you some content that you can take and use in your life to maybe get some new life skills to set yourself up for sustainability over time, better quality of life and results at last. Honestly, it, does, it sounds difficult and I used to be of the, the mindset and I was in that club where I used to say or see a celebrity that got shredded and I would say, and it wasn't even just this last year, just the beginning of the year, I was still saying like, oh, you know, must be nice to have all that money. I, if I had that money, I'd hire someone too to plan all my meals and to, and to, to train me and whatnot. But then I decided that that was just a big old excuse. And I just went to work and I just 
took some tools, took the information that I had, and I just started running with my meal prep, with planning ahead, with planning my fitness. I didn't need all the money in the world and I didn't need to hire people to do it for me if I just took some self-awareness and some discipline in my life. And now it's literally, like I'm actually at that danger point because it is like clockwork. I've reprogrammed everything about and how I eat. So it, uh, I really enjoy it, but it's also at that danger zone where it's clockwork. It's so easy that I almost forget that it's like something I'm, I'm doing, like it's an activity, it's a discipline. So when you get things that become so easy, it's easy to stop doing them when you, start, when, you, when you take your eye off the goal. So I'm not there, but I'm just, it's one of the things I had that self-awareness, like, man, this is like clockwork. This is easy now. Like it just happens. I just do it every day. And uh, that's when I could easily stop doing the little things, like stop writing my, on my tracking journal or stop putting things in my fitness pal or stop weighing out food or uh, things like that. And I don't always, but I do the majority of the time to keep myself on track and on goal. So the way to do it as far as with, uh, with additional fitness, especially with cardio, but weight training is great too, because it creates that. And I'm not, I don't know any like scientific, there's a lot of channels out there, but basically when you work the body and you build muscle, you'll have that um, uh, I think it's called like a thermogenic thing or whatever. Basically your body will, will burn more energy throughout the day because you used it because you grew some muscle and because you told your body that you're going to be using it, that it needs to be active and it's, it's working more optimally. So throughout the day, it will continue to burn more energy. So your calorie energy needs will change over time. So the deficit thing will change. And I actually hit that in my own uh, my own fitness and my own goals. Again, that's a subject later on. But the way to do it to create a deficit that I think is sustainable that you can enjoy is increasing fitness. So instead of cutting all the way back to 1500 to 1700 calories, that's going to be, you're going to be like hungry a lot and you're going to be angry and you're not going to enjoy that. So eventually that's going to fail uh, unless you are like the utmost of disciplined person. Another way to go about it is to start adding some fitness start adding 20 minutes of cardio. I, I prefer hit cardio because it's just, it's more, uh, you can get it in a smaller period of time. And that's basically where you're elevating your heart rate up and then letting it return or resting a little bit and then elevating it again, like sprints, things like that, instead of steady state, where it's just a continuous, you're just like on the treadmill or you're going for a steady bike ride or whatever else. Like you're not really going up and down with the heart rate, it's just steady. Where hit, of course, like I said, is like you bring in a heart rate to max and then you're bringing it back down again and you bring it back to max. Like I like to look at it as more of like real life stuff. Like I guess if you want to say functional, like hit training would be more your, you're hunting for your food or something is chasing you and you got to get away. So you're, you might be fine that suddenly there's a bear behind you and you got to run. So there's, there's your sprint. Whereas steady state is more just like regular fitness and exercise. You know, you're just out, you're just using your body, you're just living. Uh, maybe you're building something or you're, you're just doing stuff. So anyway, as far as you're, you're uh, creating that deficit, things like, um, you know, adding some cardio, adding, I always recommend, like even before cardio, weight training, man, woman, doesn't matter. Weight training, uh, that I believe is going to be the, the place to start. But you could just start with, you know, 20, 30 minutes of cardio and start throwing that in. Because what that's going to do is that's going to take, say, your, your base level of 2,000 calories. Now you're going to burn anywhere from, you know, 100 to upwards to, let's say, 400 calories, depending on what you're doing. And don't go on the, the apps or the, I don't, the tracking things and they say, like, you burned 1,000 calories because you did 45 minutes of cardio. That's a bunch of BS. All right. Uh, it does, it's not that easy. Okay. It's not that easy. So some people do that and like, Oh yeah, I burned a thousand calories. So then they go out to a buffet and, and binge 5,000 calories in one sitting. That's not sustainable over time. And that's not going to get you where you want to go. That's not going to keep you in the deficit, which is slightly under the energy that your body needs. So then it's going to start pulling from the energy that you have stored over the years. What you're going to do is add in the fitness. So say it's 2000 calories to live. And now you've started doing some fitness three to five days a week. You're just doing 20 minutes of cardio or you're hitting the gym and you start burning. I mean, it, it's hard to estimate. This is where these are just base numbers that we're starting with. And then you see what happens over time. And that's why measuring and tracking and weighing and all that stuff comes in. Cause then you know, precisely the, the more you do it, like you don't have to do that stuff, but the more you do it and the more focused you are and disciplined on your tracking and weighing out food portions and all that stuff, the more precise the data, so then the more precise the results and you can make adjustments much easier because you know exactly where you are. 
And uh, so if you're not weighing, you're not measuring, you know, two tablespoons, I've said this before, two tablespoons of peanut butter that you think you're putting in your shake might be actually like four tablespoons. So you're going from 180 calories that you thought is actually more like 360 calories or energy units plus the additional fats that come with that and the additional sugars depending on what kind of peanut butter you're using. Just an example, but you might be using more than you think you are, or you might be using less than you think you are. That's where just having a food scale, just a simple scale, and measuring out portions is, I think, ideal if you really want to meal prep for success. So if you add in the fitness, 2,000 calories a day to live, but then now you're burning, say, like 100 to 400 calories. Let's just estimate. Let's just say like 300 calories. Okay, so now you're at actually 2,000 calories to live, to keep the lights on, plus 300 calories of energy units that you are using in addition because you're doing fitness, you're, you're active. So now you're at about 2,300 is your maintenance level. Okay, so at that point, now you want to create that deficit of say three to 500 calories. So you're at 2,300. Now you can eat somewhere between 1,800 to 2,000 calories a day on average, right? It's all averages. Don't worry too much about the dailies, but that's where you want to average. And you can use things like the free MyFitnessPal to track that stuff to see where you're at. So that way you can actually have more of a sustainable approach because you can still eat. You can feel good. You can feel satiated. You can enjoy the food. Like I'll teach you different things on how to make food or uh, how to replace certain things that, uh, you know, and how to use spices and extracts and all that things that are basically like they don't have any impact. So you just kind of, you can include that stuff and really enjoy the food. Some of the food I've been making this last week has been more of like a freestyle thing where I just kind of like take some fresh vegetables and some nice fruits and then meats and I just kind of put it all together in this bowl I call a macro bowl because it's, it's relatively balanced with oils and so I've got fats in there and uh, it's just kind of got all my macros in there that I'm looking for and it is just insanely good. So not only am I eating well but I also really enjoy it. So it's all very sustainable because I could just keep doing it. And there's so much variety, not only in the different mixtures that I've been doing of the actual vegetables and the flavors and the different types of oils between coconut oil. Uh, sometimes I use a little bit of butter. Sometimes I use olive oil. Like there, and there's more things that I'm adding over time to kind of adjust and, and get things where I want it and uh, to hit my goals where I'm going. But that's how you can create a, a deficit whilst enjoying your life making it sustainable, having a good quality of life. You can still go out to eat. You can still have that, you know, that pizza, but you don't need to eat pizza every day and you don't need to eat half the pie. Enjoy one or two pieces and, and you're fine. And just have that. Every once in a while, have some ice cream. Every once in a while, if you like drinks, have some drinks, but be careful with the mixers because that's just usually a bunch of sugar. Like the other day I had this little gathering. I had four shots of tequila and I used four ounces of pineapple juice. Of course, because I've changed my palate because of the reduction of, or the elimination totally of sugar, of sucrose, table sugar. I still use honey. I use all kinds of different things that have, you know, fructose from, uh, from fruit. I have lactose from milk. I have all kinds of sugars. I just don't use the regular granular table sugar that you see or brown sugar, things like that. That's just not in my diet. And that, I promise you, that doing that consistently now over six months has changed my palate. I really taste the intricacies of, of fruits and vegetables. Like, they're just robust in flavor. Like, I took my first bite of my macro bowl last night, which was some Brussels sprouts, which become, like, my new favorite after I learned how to actually cook them correctly. And it just, I had to pause that first bite was just, it was too good. It's just like, this can't be good for me and taste this good at the same time, it still blows my mind, but it's true. And I'm gonna teach you how to do things like that. But again, it's all setting up the deficit if you wanna lose weight, but not, going, not restricting yourself. Don't go like 1,200 calories or 1,500 calories. Or, I mean, it all depends on what, what your goals are. So that you have to determine first, okay? I'm just throwing numbers out there, um, more averages than anything. Say you went and like, I mean, I train a lot. So I train like anywhere from, from five to six days a week. So my calorie expenditure on top of my maintenance, which I don't even know, like when I put my numbers in MyFitnessPal now with the, the activity level that I have, I'm close to 3,000. With my goals, of course, I'm creating on the other side of it, uh, trying to create a small surplus. So I'm trying to take in just a little more energy than I am actually spending every day to try to get my body to, to grow muscle. 
And at the same time, the thing that I focus on the most out of macros, out of everything, is my protein. And I aim for no scientific real particular reason here, but for me, about one gram per pound, give or take, plus or minus a little bit, doesn't matter. So I'm right now I'm about 140-ish pounds. So I'm aiming for about 130 to about 150 grams of protein. And sometimes it's more, sometimes it's a little less, but it averages out in that range. It's actually been a little bit higher because the body needs protein to build muscle, to my understanding. That's my opinion. That's what I understand. And I mean, that's, that's what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm, at this point, I haven't put on mass, so I can't really tell you how to gain mass. I'm experimenting now. I just started October 15th, so that's my journey now to wrap up the year. But I can definitely tell you how to meal prep to lose weight and how to create a deficit because I did it and I live it, and it's sustainable, and here I am standing in front of you, still going at it it's over six months. I know that's not like a huge amount of time, but the fact is, it's still here, and I still have my physique. I've kind of normalized a little bit here. I was getting, like, I was really excited about it, obviously, you know, my stories and stuff, and my shirt off, and I was taking a lot of pictures, and that's exciting, but I've kind of gone back into work mode now, where I'll show you that stuff. I want to show you results and progress over time, because that matters, but I, I don't, you know, <laughs> kind of got over the MySpace era pictures in, you know, in the bathroom, stuff like that. At least I cleaned my mirror. So there's that. But anyway, so th you'll see less of that stuff, more maybe with my shirt on. But I will occasionally give you uh, videos where I show like progress pictures just so I, I show that I'm actually walking the walk. Like I know what I'm talking about. And uh, I want to give you tips that will help you. It's all my opinion, right? It's, you know, if you're going to do anything drastic, go to a professional and uh, you know professional doctor or your or whatever to make sure that you're doing everything like if you're on medications or if you have certain like a thyroid issue or or uh, insulin uh, problems or whatever like that stuff that's those are things you're going to have to work around and those are problems I don't really have in my life so I don't have to work around that stuff but I, there are obstacles that I've hit and there th there are things that I'll share that will help you I hope get better results and in time get that physique that you want but more importantly have a sustainable set of life skills that you enjoy and that gives you a better quality of life. So whether that's losing 300 pounds or losing like I did, losing 20 pounds that you didn't even know you had to lose, whatever that is, having the quality of life and just feeling good every day is what matters the most and enjoying the food that you eat like enjoying the process. That's what makes it sustainable. So Jason here, betterbody90.com. Keep rising with purpose and I will see you next video. Hey guys, Jason here. If you're looking for a workout program, I still think Team Beachbody has some of the best home workout options available on the market today. And of course they have their, their Beachbody on demand streaming service now. So this is the browser version. I like to do a lot of things like Insanity, Asylum 1, Asylum 2, X3 Yoga, X2 Yoga, uh, a variety of different things to keep my training mixed up. Here's my Roku. Sorry about the unmatched frame right there. But on my Roku Smart TV, uh, I like to stream my workout sometimes on the big screen or in a different location in the house, <laughs> more like the AC. But uh, it gives you options. So I like to do that here. And also there are app versions. So you can Apple, Android. And the cool thing about the app, not on the browser or the smart TV, but on the app, you can actually download your workouts for offline use. So you can take it where you don't have Wi-Fi and stream it on your phone with a headset on. It's good to go. So if you're looking for a program, I have my link here, ondemandfitness247.com. Just goes directly to my, my affiliate link, Team Beachbody. There are a few options. Uh, they're all the same as far as access. You get access to a lot of the different programs. But if you do the three-month the one I'm showing here on the screen, you can actually do a 14-day free trial to just check it out. And if you don't want it, just make sure to cancel before the 14 days and there's no charge. But otherwise, it'll just continue to charge you from that point on. So check it out, ondemandfitness247.com, and I will see you guys next video.